Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali. So in this series of videos, uh, I'll be talking about chemical reactions that involve a special type of species, which is aqueous species. And we're going to discuss in this particular video why we care specifically about aqueous species and why we differentiate it from other types of species. So first off, let's just talk about what uh, is considered an aqueous solution. An aqueous solution is a homogeneous mixture so in other words, you can't tell that there's a, there's a mixture because it's homogeneous that contains species that have been dissolved in water, liquid water. So there's several terms that you need to know just to be able to understand or follow the discussion. One is the term solvent. This refers to um, the species that's relatively more abundant in the mixture, in the solution. Okay, And a solute is referring to the species that's relatively less abundant, so the one that's present in smaller amount, a smaller concentration. So in aqueous solution, the word aqueous here really refers to the presence of water. So water is generally present in a much larger amount than other species, so water is normally the solvent. And other substances that dissolve in water are what we call the solutes. There are really a couple of important reasons why we separate aqueous solutions from other types or other um, states of matter, other physical states such as solids, liquids, and gases. And the reason is because a large majority of reactions occur in the presence of water and can only occur if water is present. And of course the most important of this is all biological reactions, right? Water is important to life and unless you have water, biological reactions cannot take place. So in order to be able to study biology, you first have to understand the chemistry of water-based reactions or aqueous reactions. In fact, as you know, many uh, missions of NASA is in trying to search for planets or other uh, planetary bodies or, or other uh, extraterrestrial bodies that contain waters in them because water has been known to us to support life. So once we can find water, there might be uh, evidence for life as well in that particular uh, planet or in at the moon or uh, other places where NASA is looking for water. So in fact, this is a homepage of NASA and it shows that one of the mission is of course to use um, uh, various type of uh, satellites or uh, uh, other type of uh, uh, robots to look for water in, in other uh, bodies outside Earth. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of what you'll be uh, uh, covering in this chapter as far as aqueous species are concerned. The first part is we just want to understand generally what are the properties of an aqueous solution. Okay, And in that sense we want to understand what happens in uh, atomic scale or in a molecular picture when something is dissolved in water, when a solid is dissolved in water. And secondly, we want to talk a little bit about electrical conductivity because that's a way for us to differentiate between different types of solutions. We then will spend some time discussing how we express concentration of solutions because depending on whether you have a lot of solute or a little bit of solute, the solutions actually don't behave the same way and don't have the same properties a lot of times. And an, another big component of this chapter is discussing various types of chemical reactions, uh, a lot of which are reactions that take place specifically in water or in aqueous solutions. So we would discuss precipitation reactions and some of the uh, terminologies that go along with that type of reaction, acid-base reactions as well as redox reaction. And at the end of this chapter we would really spend some time um, doing stoichiometry calculations, the type that you uh, did in the previous chapter, uh, but in this, specific, in this particular chapter we would uh, do it specifically for aqueous species. Okay, so the next video will then discuss the first of these concepts, which is the molecular picture of a solution and the electrical conductivity.